War. War never changes. Except in Civilization 6 where it's actually changed a little bit. Hey guys, Gamerzak here and welcome to another one of my Civilization 6 videos. Now the diplomatic game in the Civilization series has always been seen as a bit lacking and one particular gripe that we've all had is how leaders seem to be illogical and unfair when it comes to declaring war. Another Civ is spreading a religion you don't want so you attack them to stop them? Well, you're the warmonger. An ally asked you for help in a war? That's it, you're the warmonger and your ally denounces you. Well, aside from the new agenda system that should help rationalize the AI's behavior, we now get a casus belli system, which basically translates to a case for war. So how declaring war works in Civ 6 is the more that you declare war, the more warmonger points you accumulate. The exact effect of these points is unclear at the moment, but it will definitely affect your relationship with the AI civs and how they behave towards you. The Cassus Belli system is basically independent conditions where if any of them are met, you'll have an option to declare war and not get such a bad warmongering penalty and you won't lose your friends. You actually select this from from a separate window on the diplomacy screen when you want to declare war. Also, one important note is that diplomacy in Civ 6 is meant to become more complex as the timeline goes on. So there are actually no warmonger penalties at all in the ancient era, but by the time you hit the Renaissance and beyond, they really start to take effect. And it's that era where you'll start to unlock the Casus Belli through the civics tree. It's been stated that there are a total of six Casus Belli in the game, and we've seen five so far, but there could be a total of seven depending on how you look at it. The first main four Casus Belli are unlocked once you reach diplomatic service on the civics tree, which also allows you to establish permanent embassies with other civs and train spies. So you can see this is where the diplomatic game really shifts into a new era. Anyway, onto the types of war. First of all, we have the base surprise war. This is where you just declare war from out of the blue without any real justification and you'll get an increased warmongering penalty. This can be the main form of war in the early game because remember that the warmongering penalty is reduced in earlier eras and is zero in the ancient era. Then we have the Casus Belli, where we'll start with what should be the earliest one available and move along the timeline. The first Casus Belli is the Formal War. This is used to declare war on a player you have denounced at least five turns ago. There also aren't any restrictions on which cities you can capture. Basically, this is going to be the proper channel for going to war before the Renaissance and seems to be a simple way of going to war while giving your opponent some time to prepare for it, as opposed to the base Surprise War, which gives you a high warmonger penalty. Next we can go over the four Casus Belli unlocked by the Diplomatic Service Civic in the Renaissance era. First of the four is the Holy War, which is used to declare war on a power that has religiously converted one of your cities. Whatever happens in this war, all warmonger penalties are halved. Then we have the Liberation War, which is used to declare war on a power that has captured a city from one of your friends or allies. There aren't any warmonger penalties for liberating any of those cities, but you can't go capturing cities for yourself. Next is the Reconquest War, which is used to declare war on a power that has captured one of your cities. No warmonger penalty applies as long as you're just taking back the cities that you originally owned. And then we've got the Protectorate War, which is used to declare war on a power that has attacked one of your allied city-states. Again, no warmonger penalty for liberating that city-state. So you can see at this point that using the Casus Belli justifies your war, but it does have its limitations, most often when it comes to which cities you're allowed to capture. Capturing more than you should would start to make you a warmonger again. Anyway, the final Casus Belli remain unknown and must be further along the civics tree. Some also say that the formal war doesn't count as one of the justified Casus Belli, and there might be a total of seven. We can, however, try to guess what the remaining Casus Belli could be. And since the system seems to be inspired by Europa Universalis's Casus Belli system, there are a lot of options out there. The devs did say that diplomacy would get more complicated as the timeline goes on, so the final Casus Belli should be something a little more nuanced, probably around the time the final three forms of government are unlocked. Democracy, communism, and fascism. At the end of the industrial era and into the atomic era. So maybe we'll be getting a disarmament war to forcibly disarm nuclear powers, or form of government war to force others to change to your form of government. 
In conclusion, it's important to not see the Casus Belli as more ways to go to war, but rather it's more like requirements before you go to war. They act as restrictions and permissions rather than motivations. You actually have to have a reason to go to war, otherwise you'll be punished for it, and so will the AI. If you're not going for a domination victory, Casus Belli gives you permission to go to war for short times to protect your empire without any penalty. And it's also a hindrance for civs going for a domination victory to simply march their way across the globe without any penalty whatsoever. Overall, this should make war in Civilization VI make a lot more sense. Either way, that's about it for Casus Belli and declarations of war in Civilization VI for now. What do you think of the new Casus Belli system? And what's your guess for what the remaining Casus Belli could be? If it's the future and they've already been revealed, I'll leave an annotation and a note in the description. Also, if you're looking for more Civilization VI videos, I have one all about religion and religious wars. Or if you're looking for new complexities in the game, I have a video on that too. I also release a new Civilization VI video every Friday, so subscribe to see the next one in your feed. And that's it for me, my name's been GamerZack, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video!